Chad, uh, biggest takeaway from uh, Sonny Dykes there uh, from TCU is, uh, yeah, one or two plays that come to mind. I'm thinking, yeah, uh, big plays where you knew they checked in. Michigan knew they checked into something that they were caught with. They had the perfect play ready to go. Yeah, all-out blitz coming here, and then we're going. We're uh, knocking the, the top off of it with the play. Uh, honestly, the big takeaway, Hutton, for me is that yeah, the st- sign stealing is normal, but it looks like there were some things that were happening that were above and beyond what normally would happen in football. And I, that's the biggest distinct- distinction to me, Hut, is throughout this is, yeah, everybody can acknowledge sign- stealing signs is a football thing. But what many fail to acknowledge is that what Michigan is accused of doing and what they did, quite frankly, that yeah. we know now, yeah. it is above that. It, they went past the line of what would well, be respectful or to- respectable in terms of competition in this whole ordeal. I agree totally. Um, now, now, let me. So here we are with the start of the 2024 season, right where we were with Buzz for the start of the 2023 three season, where Sharon Moore is going to miss a game. You know, you've got Harbaugh battling the NCAA. Uh, you and, would think he's going to miss a game. Well, but we no, don't know no I'm going back a year now. A yeah. year ago, Sharon Moore was going to, oh, he, yeah, he was yeah, going to miss you. a game. Yeah. There were other there were going to be other assistants that were going to be suspended for a game by Michigan. Jesse Minter. Um, and then there was Harbaugh, who was battling with the NCAA about a four game suspension. And then the NCAA, through their um, investigation, they're coming back and saying, No, 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 you know what? It's off the table. We're not gonna be bullied by <laughs> by Jim Harbaugh here. And, well, then Michigan self-imposes a three-game suspension for Jim Harbaugh. And we see Sharon Moore as the stand-in coach, the interim coach, whatever you want to call it, while Harbaugh's not there. Then in October, the Connor Stallions story breaks. The sign-stealing scandal at Michigan. And Chad... At that moment, Sharon Moore allegedly deletes 52 texts on the same day that the Stallions report came out, and he became the face of the espionage. I believe he even referred to it as this. The espionage that was going on across uh, the, uh, in, in the background, but across future opponents, stadiums, uh, and on the sideline, trying to decipher signs trying to crack the code and get ready for game day for a huge competitive advantage. That happened at Central Michigan as well. Central Michigan and Michigan State early in the season. Here's the report that says NCAA investigators determined that Connor Stallions, guess what? He was on the sidelines wearing a disguise during the Central Michigan-Michigan State game last fall, according to the draft. No info provided on how he got a bench pass for the Central uh, Central Michigan uh, sideline with the media pass. He had the visitor pass. There he is in the sunglasses. Of course, we all remember the red dot blinking. He has Central Michigan gear on. The head coach, Jim McElwain, of course, with connections to Michigan prior to joining uh, the Central Michigan program. Connor Stallion standing there. No one, no, we're still waiting on the investigation to wrap up on Central Michigan determining how he had access to the sideline. But the NCAA's finally told us, hey, uh, yeah, th- he's confirmed. We all knew this. We also knew, even though there's a, n- a notice of allegations here, we've also known through B-roll and just a reporter sideline access, for instance, the Ohio State game, where Connor Stallions is standing next to, guess who, Sharon Moore. Play caller. So, yes, of course, They had a solid relationship because Connor Stallions had the info. He's on the sideline, standing next to the play caller, giving advice as signs come in and formations come in for how things are going to be either defended or how they're going to call and set up against said defense. He did this for both offense and defense, but there's multiple shots of Stallions on the sideline with Sharon Moore. And this is the guy that's going out and filming signs, 
for future opponents and especially for opponents in their conference. Chad, we've known that Moore certainly had a great relationship with Connor Stallions. We've known that Connor Stallions took the fall. We've known that the NCAA is extremely pissed off at Jim Harbaugh. So one of two things is going to happen here. Um, the NCAA is so pissed off at Jim Harbaugh, they're going to go after Sharon Moore with the notice of allegations. They're really going to go after Central Michigan. We'll see. And we either see that or we see what we've already seen, which is everyone's kind of, well, the punishments have happened. Uh, it's kind of old news at this point. Or is there that in between? Because Michigan knew when they just elevated Sharon Moore to become the head coach of the Michigan Wolverines, when Harbaugh took the gig with the Chargers, uh, when we saw some of the staff members follow him to Los Angeles, we've known that Michigan knew the background here. They self-imposed suspensions. They did other things. They cooperated with the NCAA. We've known that Charlie Baker the president of the NCAA said right after they won the title that Michigan won it fair and square. Said this. And we've even seen where in December of this year, we uh, will watch Ward Manuel, their athletic director, accept an award from the National Football Foundation, the John L. Toner Award, which is for... Excellence in Athletics Administration. Just a round of applause for Ward Manuel. Excellence in Great job, Athletics Ward. Administration. I mean, it's... Uh, Doubling down on is, that cheating program. Good job, Ward Manuel. This is, Excellent This work. has been just a Connor Stallions problem. This has been a Jim Harbaugh problem, but Harbaugh doesn't have the problem anymore, and no one has rolled on him, past, present, or future. It doesn't seem like. Or even players are no longer with the program that have transferred out or with coaches that were either fired or, or they got a better job opportunity, they chose to leave, they retired. No one's rolled on this dude. But we're just now getting around as a, from the, the quote-unquote governing body of the NCAA to release uh, a notice of allegations based on 52 texts that were deleted in this chain. Didn't the NCAA talk to Connor Stallions on campus? Can't they not look at his phone? Because if... Sharon Moore sent texts, that same chain would be on Connor Stallion's phone, would it not? This is kind of, uh, what are we doing here territory for me? It is. Because if you're going to go after Sharon Moore and you really want to screw Michigan over, you don't do it right before the season. You do it whenever they're not really doing anything other than just elevating him to become the next head coach because Harbaugh left them whenever the hiring process had pretty much made its way down the path of you're not going to be able to hire anybody but Sharon Moore because that's who Jim Harbaugh appointed as his guy. Hun, we got some breaking news. You ready for this? Let's hear it. Um, Amy Folan, Central Michigan Athletic Director, still has not responded to our request for interview uh, to update us on their internal investigation at CMU into whether or not that's Connor Stallions on the sideline. The NCAA has been able to confirm it. I'm willing to bet that Netflix doc that's got Connor Stallions on the couch talking the whole time. I bet he's willing to confirm it also that that was him on the sideline. But Amy Folan, whose official title at Central Michigan is the Zyzlewski Family Associate Vice President of Athletics. I love the corporate sponsorships of job titles. Will you say that again? Zyzlewski Family Associate, which apparently is like a legal firm up there in Central Michigan. Um, she's the Zyzlewski Family Associate or a donor, Vice President of athletics. That's on the business card. Director of athletics for Central Michigan. Chad. Still no response. So that's the breaking news. She's not gotten back to us I, on I, that internal investigation. I, I mean. It, into how he got the pass. I, I can't. Who. And, was, and the gear. It was Jim McElwain. And the gear. I, I, I just want. Let me. Let me say. I'm not trying to defend what Michigan and the football staff did. I'm also not trying to sit here and say. Yeah. Great job NCAA. No. Because no one is. they allowed Tony Petiti to have more backbone than their governing body. And in order to, I don't know what they're trying to send and, and show here, uh, they're now going to act like they're in charge after letting that team go win the national title. 
this is not going to factor into anything I'm going to be passionate about regarding the upcoming college football well, season. Well, no, no, it does not. But I, I will say this for not on behalf of the NCAA. I, I don't, I don't like the NCAA, it, but they're the ones that have to administer something on all of this. It's about understanding and reading the room. I think with different violations. Okay, when the NCAA announced we are going to investigate the University of Tennessee and their dealings with Nico Yamaleava and NIL before he was there. Immediately, the attorney generals of Tennessee and Virginia got together, and they're filing counter lawsuits against the NCAA. Injunctions are being filed. And the NCAA just came back and said, all right, guys, you got us. Probably should not be going into these waters anymore because no one cares. They don't. Because every program worth its salt is paying players through NIL. And even those that hate Tennessee, they understand the market and they really don't care, and they don't want to get all up in arms over this, and they certainly don't believe the NCAA should be the ones legislating right. NIL payments made before or after a player's on campus or whatever. America's appetite to worry about what a player's making or whether or not they're getting paid is over because it's legal now. No one gives a damn about that. They do give a damn about this. Now, Michigan wants to act like it's completely common and they've done nothing wrong and, oh, Ohio State does it and Auburn does it and everyone else does it. I've learned for years that there's a difference between a Michigan man and everyone else. They have touted themselves as the holy program that operates by a different code of conduct and standard than the rest of the country. They're not the SEC. They're not Ohio State. Ohio State is that poor program down south. We are Michigan. We are Michigan men. This is Ann Arbor, ladies and gentlemen. We do things at a higher level here. This is an upstanding academic university, and our Michigan men would not do this. They've flown in the face of all this. I want to see them hammered over it. I really do. And only for this reason. They're so damn arrogant about their cheating is my problem with it. They're wanting to gaslight the rest of college football and act like, no, you're doing the same thing. No, no, they're not. Sonny Dykes was just on with us. He wouldn't be talking about it that way if TSU was doing the exact same TCU, stuff. TCU, TCU. Yeah, TCU. If TCU, what did I say? TSU. No, TSU's not doing it either. <laughs> TSU, TS, TCU, all of them. None of them are doing it. So that's the issue I have with it. If they would have come back and said, hey, we've done something wrong here and we're going to admit to it and we're going to take our lumps now. Or if they would have, after the fact, when Jim Harbaugh left for the Chargers, knowing he was going to get a show cause, if they then would have said, okay, he left, we need to get rid of all of these other people associated with Connor Stallions and the blatant cheating that was going on that's very different than the rest of college football. If they would have admitted that, if Ward Manuel, winner of this award coming up, would have said, we're going in a different direction because we don't want the stain of this anymore, fine. Then I'd say NCAA, they, they've admitted fault by hiring someone new. But the fact they double down on it, then they triple down on it by hiring Sharon Moore and do all this, yeah, I kind of want to see him get hammered. Well, but and they, I don't think the NCAA is in a position to hammer anyone on, over much of anything. So I agree with you there, Hutton. It's a weird institution yeah. to be administering this, and I'm not going to give them a ton of credit for it. If anyone deserves it right now, it is Michigan. I'm not based on their arrogance okay. and how they handled this. But to be fair, though, Chad, I, be, I strongly believe you and I, if we're in that spot, would be arrogant in how we approach this. And here's why. The NCAA investigation didn't even call Sonny Dykes or the TCU program. And you can tell he's willing to talk about it. He just told us they didn't call. Yeah. That, that's number one. And number two, if everyone truly cares about this being a massive deal, why is Ryan Day on the hot seat for losing to Michigan in back-to-back -back years? Because well, if he loses again for a third time, he's fired. Yeah, I mean, and if that if two years ago that would have been, uh, you know, you can on uh, truly based on what we just heard from Sonny Dykes, that's a huge advantage. And well, that they, they was didn't one have of the that years. advantage the last last year, right? Because everyone already, was so wise it, to it by then. But so he's they already everything. already lost to Sharon Moore technically. Yeah, but so you get my point though, like there. No one's going to get a loss back or the grace of, oh, yeah, you, you faced Michigan here. It's not going to help anyone for the NCAA now in 2024 when Harbaugh's not there. It would have helped everyone last year if they did something to Jim Harbaugh and that staff last year when 
we watched them go win the title. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. And, they, and the president said they want it fair and square. Well, let me. When I say I want them hammered, I, I don't think anything should happen to that national championship. They won it. Uh, they were under investigation. <laughs> Everybody had to change it. Yeah, they they won the national title. <laughs> I, my issue again is, we can debate about how much of an advantage they got by doing this or, or whatever. My issue is the arrogance in not just doing it, but continuing to do it for a long time. I mean, Sonny Dykes is talking about it like everyone in the Big Ten knew about it. I know. He said I, yeah. a couple times it's usually, well, we talked to coaching staffs that lost to Michigan, so it's they're crying over spilled milk, and it's not really a thing. But then when everyone said, oh, they had our signs, they had this team sign, then we talked about then they had our sign, right. then it's a bigger problem, and it clearly was giving them some advantage. Do I think last year's Michigan team, from a player standpoint, was undeserving of the national title? No, I think they were the – rightful national champions. I don't want that national championship touched. But I do want Michigan penalized for the arrogance of acting like it's absolutely nothing when, in fact, it is a little something. And if they can prove, and I, I, I've not seen any proof of this yet, and it's not going to be the NCAA that's going to be able to prove it. It's going to be a, probably an investigative journalist of some, of some sort. But if they can prove that Michigan messed with games not involving them to try to knock off people in their path for the playoff – I think that takes this scandal to a whole new level. No evidence of that yet. But if that happens, I mean... Well, the evidence we had... Then take their national championship the away. Evi- the only evidence we have of that would be that Venmo account, right? Yeah. That was tied to a... A different... A fan at Vandy had Tennessee not lost to South Carolina. Yeah. The next game was Vandy, and there was a whistleblower and some connection of Saying payment. they were looking at um, yes. signals. Yes. So you know there's more there. I'm anxious to watch the documentary. I don't think that uh, Connor Stowns is going to incriminate Michigan in any way. I wouldn't think he would. But maybe he's arrogant enough to say some things that would incriminate Michigan. And then we're going to find out a little bit more about all this. I doubt it. But I'm going to watch it for that very reason. The whole, just the whole timeline of if, you're, if, uh, if the NCAA is upset with Harbaugh and the arrogance of which he approached it. And then Michigan, you know, they suspend for three games to begin the season. Uh, then they have the three-game suspension by the Big Ten, right? You've got all this going on. You have, Harbaugh's on the plane going to Penn State. We know the storyline. Uh, the time to do something about that approach is, you know, no, you're not going to now just go win the title and go off into the sunset for the NFL. Again, because the arrogance started from up top and they wanted to pin Harbaugh on something and we still haven't seen anything. But now they're going to pin... Sharon Moore for deleted text messages when we know like there was a linebackers coach that did something that was uh that was let go I believe Jesse Mentor no that, that he was the DC he was okay. the DC who I'm was the guy Brent, that was um there was another coach that was tied to yeah. uh to Stallions there would be more here and and again Stallions phone would also be another way to find this out but they don't have subpoena power so I don't think he gave them the, his phone well, I mean, then why did Michigan fire him? Huh? How did Michigan fire him? Oh, make because him... I know I, they, they know he did it, and there was enough evidence that he was doing it, even if he, they didn't have his phone records. But that, I mean, that was that was the now Michigan could have access to his phone. But I'm, I'm, sure, as someone that's a part of the university, I, I'm saying that they don't have to turn that over to and the it, NCAA. It could be a burner phone, but how would they know that uh, those text messages were to Connor Stallions if it wasn't the university issued phone? From Sharon Moore's phone. Again, it's all we we know a very surface level detail of the 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 notice of allegations. Again, needing to pour through it, but it's just odd that okay, now we're going to show them some more muscle, and it's it is it's the latest program. By the way, they thought you brought up Tennessee in the recruiting. They thought Tennessee. I said this at the time would be like Michigan, yeah. and just do something to go along with whatever they were but saying. But even Michigan didn't do anything. But they did. I mean, they Michigan, did at the beginning of the season, Chad, with, yeah. the, with the recruiting issues. Right. And that was the COVID stuff. Right. The violations but but that, of all was, the... that was violation of recruiting, and they did yeah. self-impose. I, I, yes. And, and that was probably the right thing to do at the time with that. But, I mean, if you were serious, I love the, you know, uh, like the Mark Stoops thing in Kentucky happens, and they're vacating, whatever. Nobody really cares about that. They're vacating right. past wins, but you know, Kentucky comes back very strong. We are committed 
to doing everything right by the book. <laughs> and I'm just, it's so funny because this is what would have been said 15 years ago. But it does seem like Mitch Barnhart's being somewhat serious about that. Mm-hmm. And I have no evidence that he's not serious about compliance in some way. I'm going to laugh my ass off if Michigan ever acts like they're serious about compliance. Because if you're serious about compliance, you get rid of everybody on Harbaugh's staff. You had a chance to pull the Band-Aid off and start new if you're really serious about what happened. And just chalk it up as, hey, uh, won our our national title fair and square, great, big scandal. Now we can move forward with a different staff that doesn't have the stain of this on them because we're serious about these violations. They're not. They're not serious about the violations. We'll see what the NCAA can do or if they do anything or if Michigan fights it. My guess is based on Michigan's arrogance throughout, they're going to fight it big time with whatever the NCAA tries to do. So, and, and at this point, I would, just because you can say that we served our penalty through the Big Ten, you know, whatever you want to say there. But again, um, I think at most it's what a game suspension faces a suspend, but there's no like postseason ban coming or anything like that. It's just going to be on the one. Some big, I, big games coming up for Michigan, too, I, by the way. Honestly, I want to see Michigan punished, but I believe all these things to be true. I want to see Michigan punished. I don't think it's the NCAA that should be doing the punishing based on their track record. I would also say that if the NCAA tries to come off the top rope, if I'm Michigan, I'd probably fight like hell and basically say, we don't acknowledge you as the authority anymore, so shut up and stand in the corner. I think all those things are true. I still want to see Michigan punished more than they've been in some way, strictly because of the arrogance of oh, it. Oh, yeah. And if they can connect it in any way to impropriety across the sport, not just to benefit Michigan's team directly, but to affect the outcomes of other games that would help Michigan in the playoff race, I Chad, really want them to be punished for that, final, if that can be proved. Final thought on this, we'll get to Bill Bender, and then I want you to, to tee off on what this story says about Dion. But, so... We were critical, so the Big Ten suspended Harbaugh by also a part of this. They and the NCAA has also admitted they spoke to Ohio State, I believe, right, helping out the investigation. Purdue is the other team, yeah, I'm not mistaken. But here we are in August of 2024, and they didn't call TCU. Yeah, that's weird. That the whole thing is mind-boggling to me on how they approach this. And it's just another example of leadership or trying to pretend you have it. And maybe they're, they're saying we got so much from the Big Ten schools that cooperated, we didn't even need TCU in on it because or, we had so much new, intel. Or the new Michigan coach's phone. Or information, <laughs> yeah. Or we got that FBI now, wiretap here's finally the thing. came through. If you know we deleted those messages, what do those messages say? We know we know what messages. Do you, do you have the film? <laughs> I mean, no. Like, hey, how, uh, how are those Michigan State signals coming along? No, but not just Michigan State. I need you in my no, office no, no. immediately so I can get the what if, signals. What if they said? Game. What if they said, hey, we have a potential to play Tennessee? Well, that's my that's, question. That's my. Point. I'm telling you right now. That's and, why and I want to know not, the message. It's not even if it's Tennessee or anyone, what, anyone. Like anybody. Yeah, I, if that if they in any way try to manipulate the outcome of major college football games to help themselves knock other teams off like dominoes to get into the playoff or in anything or, or help or their seeding or whatever. A potential playoff opponent. A potential playoff opponent. Which I, I was think TCU, and they didn't call them. It's totally beyond the pale of anything well, acceptable. Changing the calls worked. Dummy calls worked. Sonny Dykes just told us to, an hour ago. They worked. And if you want to know if they were preparing for future opponents that could they could face in the college football, the answer is Yes. Because the team that changed the calls beat the crap out of them. 